Bandwidth for this podcast is brought to you by CashFly at C-A-C-H-E-F-L-Y dot com. Welcome back to another exciting, stupendous, amazing episode of Mac Break Studio. Is that up hyperbole? No, that's good. Okay, good. So here we are back in the beautiful downtown Petaluma Studios of uh, Pixel Core, and we're going to talk about some of the new features of Final Cut 10.0.3, in particular, multicam. Multicam, yeah. They wouldn't multicam. Do, you're going to do a series on multicam. Yeah, it's a, it's a big subject. It's funny, because in one way, it's very simple, because multicam just works. It just works it, great. It, it just works. But there's a few things that if you know will be very helpful for times when it doesn't work or even when it does work, it's, it's important to know a few workflow things. So I'm gonna break this down into three separate things. We're gonna to talk today just about creating the multicam clip. Right. Just creating it. So bring, uh, importing the footage, I'd imagine, organizing yeah. it, how, how, it, how, you know, how it gets, the angles get sorted, yeah. that sort of yeah. thing. Or skipping all that and seeing what happens. Cause there, <laughs> cause, I like that. Because there is an option where you can just sort of like do it and it may work fine, but there's a few things you know. So I'm, I'm starting off here. So I'm in Final Cut Pro and I've actually opened the import window. So all I did, I created a new event called Multicam. It's an empty event. I clicked on import files, which brought up the import files dialog. And I've gone ahead and navigated, so you don't have to watch me do it, uh, and, and selected a set of folders. Now notice these folder names are named after the cameras from our multi-camera shoot. Okay, there's a 5D, a Canon 5D camera shot that. There's a 7D camera. There's and all a, the footage inside it. Yeah, and each one of these has footage inside it uh, for a particular take of the shoot. Right. Audio, uh, a Sony EX1, a Sony EX3, um, some visuals and you know, audio there. So the reason I'm mentioning that here is because we organized the clips into folders that have names, we can take advantage of that. Sure. Right? Using their the powerful metadata engine inside Final Cut Pro the 10. Powerful, exactly. So what I'm going to do is click Import Folders as Keyword Collections. So immediately I'll have them organized by those By the folder names, names of the folders. By the names of folders. Now, I'm not going to deal with anything else in here. I want to point out the transcoding thing to think about, though, okay? There's options to create optimized or proxy media. Um, and as you've explained in your tutorials and everything, optimized media means ProRes. Uh, Proxy. Standard, standard, oh, no, well, no, optimizes no. standard ProRes. You're right, regular ProRes. Right, it even, it even tells you with a little tooltip, that tooltip, yeah. ProRes 422, or Proxy Media will create ProRes Proxy um, Media. I generally recommend, especially if you're working with this kind of um, H.264 long op media from these DSLRs, mm -hmm. that you do both, okay? You want like, to create optimized and proxy yeah, media. I would normally, I would select both of them, but right now I'm not. Okay. And, and I'll show you why. So I'm, I'm, right now, I'm not gonna bother doing that. If you do select them, that transcoding process will happen in the background. So it doesn't mean you have to wait for anything necessarily. You can start working. You can create your multi-clips. You can do yep. what you normally yep. would, start tagging and yep. organizing. And, and as the optimized media is created, it's automatically swapped out for you. You don't have to think about it. You do need to manually switch to proxy if you want to, and more on that in a minute. Okay. So I'm gonna leave them unchecked for now, and I'm just gonna say import. So it'll bring these guys in, and uh, I didn't check that because I don't, I'm not interested in any background rendering right now. I just want to see what happens without changing it. Sure. So I've got the default media. So here is our multicam event with each of our keyword collections. So I select the ones that were the once folders. Yeah. So here's two clips shot on this uh, 5D. So they're both actually should be in the same angle. So just something to keep in mind that these two clips seem from the same camera. Okay. This camera has a shot. This camera has a shot. There's some audio. Uh, this That's your camera. Production audio. Production audio, right? This is the EX1, one shot, the uh, EX3, and then visuals is some motion graphics to go along to act as another angle. Okay. Now, um, normally what I recommend doing is some preparation on these, on these media files. I'm gonna see if I can make them a little smaller so we can see them here in my kind of low resolution for the screen capture. So I've got my files there, and what I would normally suggest doing is a little prep on these, and we'll talk more about that in a minute, but I'm gonna, I'm gonna skip it for now. So again, I'm kind of doing the fast, the so you're gonna are you way. Are, are you gonna have Final Cut Pro do the heavy lifting then? And yeah, so I'm okay. gonna do Command A to select all those Got clips. It. Okay, I'm gonna right click and choose new multicam clip. Okay. Okay. I didn't set a marker. I didn't add any metadata information. Stuff that's important to do, but you don't necessarily have to. So I'll say new multicam clip, and then this is kind of the key dialog. And I'll just mention a few things here. I'm gonna give it a name. I'll just call it TLB. It's a, the band is called Tiny Little Blackout. So I'll just give it a, a little. Uh, multi-cam clip, little name there. Now, these things are really important. Angle assembly, angle clip ordering, angle synchronization. Um, by default, they're set to automatic. And in fact, if you click use automatic settings down here, you don't even see them. It's just a 
I, la, 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 I don't know what's happening. You I'm going to trust Final yeah. Pro to do everything I'm gonna, it needs I'm going to trust it. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to, I'm actually going to go ahead and do that. Wow. Like, I don't okay. care what all that stuff is. I'm just going to do it. I'm like, don't care. Now, what's happening is there was one checkbox in there that said use audio for synchronization. I did see right? that. I did see that. Right. Yeah. Since I didn't tell it any way to synchronize these clips, I didn't give a marker in there. Or time or, code. Or time code or an in point, all which are options. It's what it's doing, it's analyzing the audio in every one of those clips and figuring out how they should be aligned. And it can take a little, depending on how long the clips are, it can take a while to do that. Are we gonna sit and watch that happen? We are, it's actually gonna go faster than you think, okay? <laughs> it, I, I hope, because I did this before and I thought like we should watch it live so we really see what's happening rather what's than- What's the, the, just for the audience, uh, how long are each of those clips? Just uh... uh They are about a minute and a half and there's, I'm doing seven different clips in here. The thing that's important to remember is two of those clips really should be in the same angle. Right, the two drummer clips. Right, right. Right, but they were that particular camera was stopped and started. It was stopped and started. And it should so be in the same, shooting, same essentially right, angle so you right. can cut to it. So look, it's it finished. Oh, wow. so that you little, were right. Yeah, look that was that. a lie. It was <laughs> a lie. It, it makes you worry, but it's, it's going to be okay. So here's our new multicam clip, and you can tell it's a multicam clip because of this little a multicam clip. Say that 10 yeah, times fast. That clip. little badge in the left corner tells you the clip type. Cliff edits multicam clip. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> so now I'm going to double click on it uh -huh. to open it up in what's called the angle editor. Okay. So this is not a compound clip. It's not a. You're not going to be able to. Do I that. can't make it any bigger. Sorry. So this is actually what's called the the angle editor, and it lets me see all of my clips. If I scroll, you'll see they're all in here, and they all start at different times. Now a couple things about that. Um, all these clips up top, if I move my mouse over here, uh, I can kind of see, I'm gonna move to the point that slate turns red, because we did slate these. Yeah. You don't have to, but it gives you more opportunities for syncing. For verification. Exactly. So I'm gonna move to about where they, they sync back in here. Now, a cool thing is, if you move your mouse over each angle, that particular angle shows up in the viewer, okay? Just by moving your mouse over it. And I can kind of see, wow, each of these have turned red. So they're actually, these are all in sync with each other. Um, and I can check that out without even opening the angle viewer. Okay, right. I haven't even opened that, but I'm, I can immediately see that these are in sync. Uh, a better way would be to go ahead under the, uh, uh, I use the keyboard shortcut, the window menu, and sh it's usually over to the left more on right. a higher resolution, so I was expecting it to be it's over It's interesting, more. one change, it says now go to, up there it says go to event. In yeah. the previous verse it said like hide. hide show and show hide. And hide. Yeah, yeah. Another go to. Uh -huh. So show angle viewer will actually allow me to see each of these <laughs> angles. This is low resolution. It's going to be miserable. So let me close, let me close the inspector. Yeah. Okay, so now we can see the angles. And um, it's set to the angle viewer is set to nine angles. So we can kind of see all those angles there. Right. And we can see if I tap the left and right arrow keys that they all turn red at the same time. We I can't see quite that on the, see the, the one thumbnail. down there. Right. Yeah, so those angles are all in sync. So what you're saying is Final Cut Pro 10 did an amazing job just using the audio to line up those Just using the takes. audio. And it's even better than that because if you scroll down, the, the, the reason these start earlier is because we have this kind of countdown. We have the slate right. and the slate gets taken out of the way and then the cameras move into position. The actual song starts over here where this starts. And notice how the visuals that's where the sync, That's where it probably is like really at that point forward, it should be completely in sync. Yeah, and, that, well, and now the song is in sync with the visuals. Um, they both start at the same time, so they're in sync. And now here's the important thing. The drummer um, is actually in two separate angles because Final Cut Pro had no way of knowing that they belong in the same angle, okay? Right. And that, so that's kind of the only problem that's happening here. Um, that's not that's not a terrible thing. No, because you could just take this guy and drag him down and try not Did, to use a try little. Try not key. to move him. Yeah. Do you have, can you hold the shift key? When I'm going to hold the and uh, that's a good question. I don't know if shift will work with this, but uh, yes, shift key will work. There. So yeah. now it's in the same angle, and then from for this angle, and I know I'm not explaining the detail of the angle editor, but I'm just going to do this and say delete angle, and now my drummer ah, clips. So you get rid of that, that empty angle that. is just yep. gone. Yeah. So now up top here in the angle viewer, I just have my seven angles: the audio all of these video clips and then this motion graphics one. Great. Okay. So it worked great without doing anything else, but here's the thing, two things. Number one, because all this media is H.264, there's no way you're going to play back all these angles on a laptop and in then, real time. And then cut to them. Right. Because in order to be able to do your editing, which we'll do the next time, 
these things play in real time. Ideally, you're uh, playing the project. I see where you're going with this. You started talking about optimize and proxy at the yes. beginning yes. of this lesson. Yes. So you're going to show us how to play, get, get real-time playback now. Yes. So mm -hmm. I'm, I'm actually not going to do detail. So my, my suggestion is one reason you create proxy when you import so that you'll have proxy footage. But another option under preferences, I, let me back up for a minute. If you didn't do it when you imported, you can always You have still another later. chance. You have another chance. You can right. right click on any clip or clips and choose transcode but media. But you have to do that on a clip by clip basis. No, because uh, you just selected one clip there. Or no, I you select, selected the I multi. Select the multi so it'll do right. every all the clips within that multi cam right. clip. It will create right. proxy. So media I could create proxy media now just for that multi cam got, got clip, it. or I could select all these original clips here and say uh, maybe not include the audio. Let's just select a few of right. them. Transcode media. And um, it'll only let me do proxy. Oh, it won't let me do optimize for these because these are actually already um, proxy media clips that we created just okay. to make this thing play. Okay. But if it was the the source video, you should you be able have to create the opposite. Right. Got it. So just to make it a little more confusing, if I haven't confused you enough already, is in preferences, in the uh, playback section. Uh, come on, baby. There's a new. Checkboxes. There's new checkboxes. Zoom, zoom, yes. zoom in on that a little bit so the okay, audience let's, let's can take see. A look. There we go. Create optimized media for multicam clips. Okay. So if this is selected, uh, that's actually why I couldn't do it in the previous thing. Because this is selected, it's automatically creating optimized media for me just for my multicam clip. Just for that, it's going to ignore just, all just of any any clip associated with that multicam clip will become optimized yes. and ignores yes. everything else. So even if I do didn't do it in import, I have an opportunity to do it afterwards either by just doing it from my multicam clips, or I can select them individually and kind of do it manually. But since that's, a, since that's set up as a preference, so anytime you create a multicam clip, it's just going to do it. It's just going to create optimized media for since you. Since it's set up, yeah. Then you don't even need to think about oh. it. Right. So you can just kind of jump in, and you're ready to go. Now, the thing is, let me just create that multicam. I'm going to delete it. Command delete. I'm going to select all these again, and I'm going to say new multicam clip, and uh, go into the custom settings. So this is what was checked. Let me just close that again. This was checked. Used audio. That's what right. we did. Okay. Uh -huh. And it worked um, darn well, too. It worked darn well. Angle assembly. This is the last thing I want to mention here is that for angle assembly, this is like how is it going to decide what goes in a separate angle? Automatic means it tries to look for information. And all... Like the camera ID? The camera ID, uh -huh. yeah. There's a yeah. metadata field called camera ID that many cameras... Uh, the Final Cut Pro will recognize for many cameras. Right. And it'll base it on that. But the problem is, DSLRs... Don't have a camera ID. There's no camera ID. And the Sonys, the EX1, the EX3, no camera ID. And I think it's because you have to rewrap the media through the Sony transfer. Sure. No camera ID. iPhones... Have a camera ID. Have a camera ID. I bet iPads yeah. have them too. So you go out to a concert or something, and you have a bunch of friends who are all shooting that concert and turning their phones, their cameras on and off. You can bring those in. It'll understand... Um, how to sync them without needing to give it an because angle. Because each of those phones have a different camera ID. They have camera ID, That's right. That's fantastic. But if they don't, like our stuff, then you could assign a camera angle or a camera name. Now, of course, you have to do that. Okay. You have to add that metadata yourself. Right. And I'm just going to show you where that is. But before we leave this dialog box, I'm going to skip angle clip ordering because that's pretty straightforward. We'll talk about it in a later lesson or I talk about it in detail in the right. tutorial. And then angle synchronization, we did automatic. But if we had put a marker on those slates, it would have right, helped. Slate, yeah. yeah, and the cool thing is you don't need to uncheck use audio. Like what Final Cut to do is if you set a marker about in the right area, then that will help the audio synchronization. So you're saying that, it, are you saying that it won't take as long as, as, as long as there's a marker there or? I don't know if it won't take as long, but it, it, if it didn't work correctly, adding a marker in combination with our audio synchronization can do, help it do right, a better job. Because it says, oh, I just need to look in this area okay. in order to sync All it. All right, that okay. makes sense. So the last thing we'll do is I'm going to select a clip and just show you where this metadata information is. I'm going to go to the inspector. And by default, we have a, a new camera name field. This is new as of the update. So you can give each of your cameras a name sure. in order to uh, assemble them. So it knows how angles. to assemble them. Right. Now we Prior saw, to making the multi-clip. Prior to making the multi-clip, mm -hmm. right. Now, what we don't see here is the um, the camera angle name. And you're like, wait, where is it? There's nothing in here. Yeah, I get emails about that. Yeah, so oh, yeah, already. <laughs> yes. So the reason is we are in this basic view. And these views are little um, uh, presets. Metadata presets. Metadata because presets. Because there's actually 300 <laughs> metadata settings you can you, apply to your And clip. you don't want to see them all. You don't want to see them all. Here. So, so they, this just shows you a little bit. Presets, right. yes. And as you go down this list, you kind of get more and more. So if I go to the general view instead, and I scroll down, um, 
all of a sudden, in addition to the camera name, we've got the camera ah, angle. So you it. can enter. One, yeah. two, or A, yeah. B, I, C, D. I want D. all these clips to be in camera angle one. Or call it whatever you, you might call the angle drummer. Sure. Because those camera angle names is what'll show up in the angle editor. So it's good to use descriptive names. Excellent. And then one more thing there, if I go to the extended view, okay, and by the way, these views are editable. You can choose what shows up in them. Uh, there's a camera ID, and you can see in this case it's blank. Because, because all Fonka of, didn't recognize the rewrapped XD Cam Media, didn't recognize the, the 7D, right. Right, whatever. And that's why yeah. I took the two drummers and put them in separate angles. Got it. That's huge. Okay. So it's important to understand this stuff, but you can see how many times you can just throw everything in and, and you're off and running. Absolutely. So um, I probably know the answer to this, <laughs> but where can someone learn more about multi-camera yes. editing? So RippleTraining.com <laughs> Ripple has a, has a, we have a full-on multi-cam that takes you through really understanding all the components so you can, you can do any kind of multi-cam editing. Excellent. Yeah. Well, so if you're doing multi-camera editing, you'll want that and stay tuned. We've got more coming. This is only act one. Thanks for watching.